election. Earlier this week, there was an MD from New York that came out, put out a video that has gone viral around the world, pleading with all the other MDs, nurses and doctors and scientists around the world, saying it looks like we may be doing more damage. We may be killing people with COVID-19. He said he didn't have the answers, but he was looking for the international community to step outside of the box, outside of the paradigm, and try and find a better way forward. This is what that video sounded like. This is Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel, ER and critical care doctor from New York City. Nine days ago, I opened an intensive care unit to care for the sickest COVID positive patients in this city. In these nine days, I have seen things I have never seen before. In treating these patients, I have witnessed medical phenomenon that just don't make sense in the context of treating a disease that is supposed to be a viral pneumonia. Nine days ago, I presumed I was opening an intensive care unit to treat patients with a virus causing a pneumonia that was ravaging lungs across the world, starting out as something mild, a uh, cough, a sore throat, and progressively increasing in severity until ultimately ending in something called acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. This is the paradigm that every hospital in the country is working under. And yet, everything I've seen in the last nine days all the things that just don't make sense, the patients I'm seeing in front of me, the lungs I'm trying to improve, have led me to believe that COVID-19 is not this disease and that we are operating under a medical paradigm that is untrue. In short, I believe we are treating the wrong disease and I fear that this misguided treatment will lead to a tremendous amount of harm to a great number of people in a very short time. As New York City appears to be about 10 days ahead of the country, I feel compelled to get this information out. COVID-19 lung disease, as far as I can see, is not a pneumonia and should not be treated as one. Rather, it appears as if some kind of viral, it appears as some kind of viral-induced disease, most resembling high-altitude sickness. It is as if tens of thousands of my fellow New Yorkers are on a plane at 30,000 feet and the cabin pressure is slowly being let out. These patients are slowly being starved of oxygen. I have seen patients dependent on oxygen take off their oxygen and quickly progress through a state of anxiety and emotional distress and eventually get blue in the face. And while they look like patients absolutely on the brink of death, they do not look like patients dying of pneumonia. I have never been a mountain climber and I do not know the conditions at base camp below the highest peaks in the world. Uh, but I suspect that the patients I'm seeing in front of me uh, look most like as if a person was dropped off on the top of Mount Everest without time to acclimate. Uh, I don't know the final answer of this disease, but I'm quite sure that a ventilator is not it. That was Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel, uh, literally almost apparently shouting from the rooftops. When I watched this video, I had some concerns because we had been getting inside reports from doctors saying things like, everybody on a respirator dies from COVID-19, something that I had never heard before. And maybe had we not been getting reports like that, I might not have taken this video by Dr. Kyle Seidel so seriously. But there was something chilling about it, something honest about it. And it made me wonder, are we going to look back in history as this being a Paul Revere moment, a doctor, someone stepping out from inside the system saying, I think we're making a tragic mistake. He was later interviewed just a few days later by WebMD. Here is some of what he had to say when he was asked uh, questions getting deeper into this conversation. You say you see things that you've never seen before. What are some of those things that you're seeing? When I initially started treating patients, you know, I was under the impression, uh, as most people were, that, that I was going to be treating acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, that, uh, you know, was similar in some sense to the, you know, ARDS that I, I saw as a fellow. Um, and as I started to treat these patients, I did. I witnessed things that, that are just unusual. And I'm sure doctors around the country are experiencing this. In the past, we don't see patients that are uh, talking in full sentence, sentences and, and not uh, complaining of overt shortness of breath with saturations in the high 70s. It's just not something we typically see. I've seen literally a saturation of zero on a monitor, mm -hmm. which is not something we ever want and something we actually actively uh, uh, try to avoid. The patients in front of me are unlike any patients I've ever seen. When we had a patient who had hit what we called our trigger to put in a breathing tube, 
meaning she had displayed a level of hypoxemia, of low oxygen levels, um, where we thought she would need a breathing tube. And most of the times when patients hit that level of hypoxemia, they are in distress and they can barely talk and they can't say complete sentences. And she could do all of those and she did not want a breathing tube. And so she asked that we put it in at the last minute possible. And it was this um, perplexing clinical condition. When I was supposed to put the breathing tube in, when was the last minute possible? And all the instincts as a physician, uh, you know, all, we're looking to see if she, you know, so-called tires out, if she's getting too tired. None of those things occurred. I came to realize that this condition is nothing I've ever seen before. And so I started to try to read. I sort of came upon decompression pulmonary sickness, which is, you know, they essentially the bends when divers dive and come up too quick, which seem to have some um, kind of a, a, a mirror picture clinically as these patients. And then, you know, in discussions with other people, it came up that, you know, they do similarly uh, appear clinically. And this is not to say that the pathophysiology underlying it is similar, but clinically they have, they look a lot more like high altitude sickness than, than do pneumonia. Um, and Gattinoni, uh, you know, he published something on March 20th. By the time I read what he was saying, um, I'd come under the impression that this just wasn't the usual ARDS that, that we were used to seeing. He's suggesting that uh, the management strategy that we use is, is essentially somewhat flipped um, at least in these high compliant patients, we may be not uh, operating under the right paragon, um, which is they... How have you changed your protocols then? So to be honest, the, you know, I've run into a, a great deal of um, resistance uh, within my institution. These are the protocols that are, uh, um, you know, in, in every major hospital and minor hospital. I mean, the, you know, we generally uh, you talked about in your videos yeah against long standing dogma um, so what's been the response from from your clinical colleagues as well as hospital administrators so to be honest in the ICU I, I, I started to try to um, you know run not my own protocols but to to treat patients as I would have treated my family under um, uh, with a different goals, which is to say a ventilation. Um, however, these didn't uh, fit the protocol. And, and, you know, the protocol is what the hospital runs on, what the respiratory therapists, what the nurses. I mean, at, you know, everyone is part of the team. And so actually we ran into an impasse where, I, you know, I could not, um, I could not morally, in a, in a patient-doctor relationship, I could not continue um, the current protocols, which again are the protocols of the top hospitals in the country, um, but I could not continue those, and obviously they couldn't have someone. You can't have one doctor um, uh, just doing their own protocol. So I actually had to, to step down from my position in the ICU, and so now I'm back in the ER. But as far as how we're going to switch is we're going to take our approach uh, 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 differently from the traditional ARDSnet um, protocol in that we are going to do an oxygen-first strategy. I want to give a shout out and thank WebMD for that very thorough interview. You can go to WebMD to see the entire thing. Of course, we have just cut that down to bring the basic information to you.